This is my favorite eye makeup look to date. Not only does this look great on camera, in photos, but it also looks great in real life. It has just the right amount of definition that makes it look great from far away, but also up close. And also look at this before and after. Look how lifted and awake my eyes look, especially on this one. Look how sad and sleepy my eyes are versus the after. It's such an easy look with just a few different steps and I think anyone can do this. And if you can't, I'm here to help. I'm gonna try to make it as easy as possible, but I believe that even beginners will be able to manage this. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the Makeup Chair channel and you enjoy tutorials like this, then I might suggest clicking the subscribe button below. It's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started creating this look. I'm gonna start by priming the eyelids and I'm using this particular eyeshadow primer by Wet n Wild. Now this primer is like cement, but like cement, it's very temperamental. But for $2.99, it's actually a really good eyeshadow primer as long as you figure out how to use it. The hardest part is just trying to get a really even layer. So I use a brush, a sponge, my fingertips. I've, I've used everything to try to create a really smooth layer. It does take a little getting used to, but it's a great primer, especially for the price. And I ran out of my usual primer, so this was a great alternative. So for our first eyeshadow, we want to pick an eyeshadow that's at least one shade lighter than your skin tone. So I'm using a very light shade because I'm very light skin toned, but you wanna customize this to work for you. And you can use any brush that you feel comfortable using. I'm using a medium fluffy brush to create a wash of color all over the lid. Now listen, the eyeshadow is very, very matte and I really want it to be very, very matte. This is going to brighten and shape the eyes, but not only that, it's also going to set that primer in place, which is just gonna create a really silky smooth layer so that any eyeshadows that go over the top are going to glide. Now, I really want you to focus on the inner corner of the eye and underneath the brow because that's where we want the most brightness to be. But I wanna say this is totally optional. If you're not a big fan of setting your primers, you like them to be slightly damp, just focus on that inner corner and underneath the arch of the brow and you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. And now we're gonna move on to the next eyeshadow. The next eyeshadow is basically like the opposite of that. So it's one shade darker than the skin tone. Think of it like contouring and highlighting. This is gonna add some depth and some shape to the eyes. And I would suggest still using a matte, but if you can't find one, a satin one is totally fine as well. I'm using the same brush and I'm going to hold it in the middle of the handle. And the reason I use the same brush is because I want to keep it really simple for you. But if you have multiple brushes, go ahead and use them. Now, what I like to do is look in a mirror and slightly tilt my head back and forth so I can kind of see where the light is hitting my eyes. What I'm looking for is for the bone of my eye or the hood or the crease, it has so many different names. Basically, I wanna tilt my head to see where I want the depth to be. This is anywhere above the lid. Basically, we want to deepen this area to recede, push back, any hoodedness that we might have in the eyes, but also if you don't have hoodedness, this also creates a framework for your eyelid. So you wanna take your brush and sweep this over and back in this area, keeping your eyes open. This is just going to allow you to see the shape that you're creating. And I think I've shown this so many times in so many videos, and most of you are probably very used to it, but for beginners or people who haven't been on this channel very often, I want you to keep your eyes open so you can see the placement you can see where you are actually applying this because we don't walk around with closed eyes. So if you're closing your eyes when you're applying your eyeshadow, you're going to be applying it in a very different way. And as we get a little bit older, our eyelids tend to move and shift when our eyes are closed versus open. So by keeping them open, you're going to make sure you are working on those areas. Now you can do a little swirling motions, sweeping motions back and forth. It's totally up to you. Now here's a little change for you. What I want you to do is when you've used up the majority of the product on the brush, I want you to bring the hand really close to the eye. And what I like to do is actually place my pinky on my cheek to kind of steady it. But also this is just gonna make sure you're placing it in the same place that 
I have been setting it. So keep it really, really close and you're going to like lay it on the face and sweep it back and forth. What this is gonna do is blend out whatever we've already applied in your brush. You don't have to pick up anything extra. Just softly blend over and back, rolling the brush. Instead of like blending, you're kind of rolling the brush over and back. This creates that very soft, blurry effect. And you should then end up with something that looks like this. So we have some depth right at the crease, but we've swept it over and back and this is going to create that nice shape for us. So far, so good, but we are going to move on to eyeliner. Now, I don't want you to worry. Yes, we are going to be applying eyeliner, but we're not going to be pressing it on the eye and creating that really solid line right across the lash line because that can be tricky for beginners in particular. Or if you're just feeling tired and you have a chronic illness and maybe you just don't trust yourself to apply eyeliner, which happens to me a lot of the time. Instead, we're going to create a middleman by using a brush. What the brush is gonna do is going to absorb a little bit of the product. So we're not gonna be very inky and wet. This is just gonna give you a lot more control as you work along the lash line. We're gonna start by pushing this at the lash line. We're using a stamping motion. So don't worry if you don't have the steadiest hands, it's totally Totally fine. Basically what you're going to be doing is pressing and lifting over and over again. You're going to be looking down in your mirror and you're just going to be stamping this all along the lash line, keeping it as close to the lashes as you can. The great thing about this is not only does it give you control, but you can also use this to remove any of that eyeshadow that might have dropped on your lashes, which is great because it creates that deeper, thicker, darker lashes that we really want. Now I'm gonna be applying some falsies later, but if you don't want to apply falsies, don't worry because your lashes are gonna look deeper, defined, and a lot darker, and it's gonna remove any of that excess product that might be on there. Another plus for this is that this line does not have to be perfect. You wanna know why? Because we are gonna go over this with a dark eyeshadow. Any dark eyeshadow that you want, as long as it's about two shades darker than your skin tone. I'm gonna be using a medium warm brown and we're using the same brush, the same placement, the same technique, that stamping motion, working along the lash line, working over the top of that black liner. And this is just going to create a lot more depth right at the lashes. And you wanna go a little bit higher as you go using whatever's left over on the brush. And by that, I mean, you don't wanna pick up any extra product. You just wanna use whatever's left over on the brush. Now, if you feel like when you're kind of stamping it and blending it upwards, you're not getting any payoff whatsoever. So you do need to dip in and pick up a little bit extra. That's totally fine, but just start the lash line to begin with so the majority of the product is placed there and then you can start to blend and bring this up a little bit higher now you might be like okay but like we're not doing a wing so what do we do with this outer edge because it does look a little awkward so what i would suggest doing is picking up a little bit of the two products so the brown and also the shade that we used in the crease and you're going to stamp this on the outer edge and then slowly bring this up on like the outer third of the lid bring this up into the crease so it kind of disappears and blends into the crease and the cool thing about this is it actually adds some depth and definition to the outer edge of the eye, which then creates a lot brighter appearance on the inner corner of the eye in comparison. And then you should end up with something that looks like this, some depth of that lash line sweeping upwards and blending to create a little bit more shape. Next, we are going to apply some glitter and I love this brand of glitter. Yes, it is my friend's brand, so I'm a little bit biased, but I love using it. And I actually tried using a NARS loose pigment, which usually works really well and looks amazing, but it just didn't work today. But then my friend's brand came in with the win. It just rescued me and made it so much easier. And the amount of people that ask me what I have on my eyes when I wear this in real life, I actually get really shy to wear this because I know a stranger is gonna ask me, but I love this product so much that I actually started to memorize a phrase because I'll always get, hey, can I just ask you what you have in your eyes? Oh, it's by Lancaster Cosmetics, it's my friend's brand, and you can use my code Sinead for a discount on their website. They barely have time to finish asking me what's on my eyes before I start with my speech because I've memorized it so much. It is such a beautiful glitter. 
this camera doesn't even do it justice. Anyway, moving on to the next step, what you want to do is look for a very similar eyeshadow to the first one that you used, but instead of being matte, I want you to choose something that has a shimmer to it. So it should be the same shade, but a different finish. And we're just gonna focus this on the inner corner and only underneath the arch of the brow as well, just to catch the light ever so slightly. I'm just gonna go off camera real quick and clean up, apply some mascara and some falsies, and then we'll continue with shade underneath the eyes. So I'm back and I'm going to be applying a light pencil to the inner half of the lower waterline. This should pretty much match your natural waterline, should just be maybe a little bit brighter than your waterline. Now because my eyes droop a little bit, what I like to do is actually darken the outer edge. What this does is actually lift it. I know it sounds strange because you're darkening something but it's lifting it. It's basically counteracting the droopiness and then it connects with the upper part of my eye. But I will do a video really soon about placement because I want you to try out a few different places so that you can figure out what works for you. I'm also going to be applying this liner on the lower part of my eye, right in the middle, and then use my fingertips to blend it out. And then there you go. I hope that you find this really easy. If you didn't, definitely let me know what you struggled with because I really want to help people just be able to do eye makeup and make it work for them. Whatever you need, I am here to help. And if you made it this far in the video, I have something kind of fun to ask you. Do you want to see a baby pigeon? Because me and Davy's pigeons, Clay and Salty, there was a whole drama that happened because it used to be Clay and Pepper, but now it's Clay and Salty because Pepper was like, nah, you're not doing enough for me, Clay. And so now it's Clay and Salty. And if you follow Davy's music Instagram, you probably saw them on his story recently. We've called them Ken and Barbie because one of them has like frosted tips. But if you'd like to see them, definitely let me know because I'll put up a short because they are so cute. I love pigeons so much. Most of you will probably remember how much I love pigeons and when I moved it was really hard to say goodbye to all of my pigeons but I'm so happy now I have baby pigeons. So let me know if you want to see them and remember as always my friends to be kind to yourself, be kind to pigeons, and I will see you in the next one.